what we're doing uh, is starting the first part of building the wing, and we're starting on the right wing. And what we have here in front of you is part of that right wing, and I'd like to show you just an example of this being a picture of the airplane, and this is the left wing, and we'll be starting to build the right inner wing. And in that wing, there are two spars, spars, one forward spar and one aft spar. Now a spar is made up of a top cord, which runs the length of the spar, and a bottom cord. And in that, we have our vertical and diagonal tubing that bring it together, and that makes you the front or rear spar. The issue here and the problems that we've tried to ha we've had to solve is this cord is 25 feet long, and on top of it, we're putting what's called a spar cap, where the wing uh, material, the wing skin, forward and aft, attaches to this. So the challenge is this is a square tube, two and a little over almost two and three quarter inches square, and the challenge being is putting this top spar cap on and having to rivet the whole length of this. So it boils down to kind of a remote riveting that we're doing. To do that, we've developed a riveting sliding bucking bar, which is put into a shoe, and then by moving, it's an inclined plane, and by moving this top, having the top piece stationary, We have the top piece clamp stationary, and what we actually pull during the bucking process is the bottom part, which as you pull it on this inclined plane, it raises the bucking bar up to the proper dimension to give us the proper bucking. The, uh, also, we have all this indice all the way down. There are 524 rivets in here that need to be bucked. So we know exactly which rivet that we're working on. So if I wanted to know, for instance, anything about this rivet, I have it indexed on this rod that we're pulling out the other end. And this rod all fits inside the tube itself. And we also use a very big 4X rivet gun to do the bucking. We've got a 3 16th inch rivet at this point that we're bucking, and then it gets up to a quarter inch rivet. So you see they're pretty good sized rivets. Now the, the process, we want to buck a rivet, we put this bar inside the tube and we have an operator working on the other end of the bar. And then at this end of the bar, since it is hollow inside, we have been able to place a camera. And you saw an earlier picture of what the camera looked like. And after we buck the rivet, we can go in and check the rivet size by moving the camera to different rivets. Now, since we have all these numbered, we can tell which rivet we've just bucked or which ones we might want to go back and do some more bucking on. So we have the capability of checking our rivet, making sure it meets the specification and is bucked properly and is not flattened the wrong way or chipped or some other problem with it. The uh, tube itself adds another complex uh, issue to it in that it's a tapered tube inside. The outside dimension is constant, two and three quarters approximately, but inside the thickness starts out at this end at a half inch thickness, and at the other end it's one eighth inch thickness. So. Along the process, we have to readjust, and we do it by putting shims into our bucking shoe. And that allows us to buck different length rivets as we progress up or down the tube. 